to make young people grow and succeed around the world canada is signing a youth mobility agreement with two countries stay tuned as we will share more on this hello and welcome to my consultant your weekly updates about canadian immigration we will start today's episode by disclosing a new agreement between canada and finland followed by ontario immigrant nominee program draw and canada's new deal with south korea next i will share a recent update in temporary foreign worker program and tishina will discuss canada's next move to support ukraine miners this episode of my consultant is brought to you by scotia bank The Government of Canada just signed a new agreement for youth opportunities abroad. Canada and Finland recently announced the signing of the Canada-Finland Youth Mobility Agreement that is expected to come into force in 2024. This new agreement will allow Canadian and Finnish youth aged 18 to 35 to travel and work in each other's country under International Experience Canada (IEC). Youth can apply to the three IEC categories, the first category being Working Holiday, then International Co-op Internship, and thirdly, Young Professionals. Youth will be able to participate in the program for up to 12 months per category. With this latest agreement with Finland, Canada now has youth mobility agreements with 36 countries and territories. On May 18, 2023, the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program, that is OINP, conducted a new invitation round for candidates with an active application under Ontario's Express Entry Skill Trade Stream. A total of 1,694 notification of interest were sent to the candidates who were eligible for this draw. The comprehensive ranking system, that is CRS score, required to be eligible for this draw was between 250 and 489. Not all occupations were eligible for this draw. This was the fifth express entry skill trade stream draw conducted by the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program in the year 2023. Canada and South Korea are expanding their youth mobility agreement. During Prime Minister Trudeau's official visit to South Korea, meeting with President Yoon, where they pinned new deals on supply chains for critical minerals, it was announced that the youth mobility agreement between the two countries will now triple the annual quota of young Canadian and Koreans to 12,000. The increase will see it that more Canadian youth and Korean youth have the opportunity to travel, work, and participate in new cultural experiences. Trudeau shares that Canada welcomes thousands of Korean students to our universities every year. And now we want to do even more. The joint effort to increase economic and cultural ties comes as both countries aim to reduce their dependence on China. Employment and Social Development Canada, that is ESDC, has updated the median hourly wage for the Temporary Foreign Worker Program, which will come into effect on May 31st this year. Employers in Canada who are hiring foreign nationals use the provincial and territorial median hourly wage to know the requirements that they need to meet the Temporary Foreign Worker Program. The location of the position and the wage being offered to the employee will determine if employers need to apply for a Labour Market Impact Assessment that is LMIA, under the stream for a high wage or low wage positions, each with their own requirements. If the employee is being paid under the provincial or territorial median wage, they are considered low wage. If they are being paid at or above the median wage, they are considered high wage. 
The temporary foreign worker program allows Canadian employers to hire foreign nationals to fill labor shortages in Canada. Employers who are looking forward to hire foreign nationals need to complete the Canadian government's labor market test. The labor market impact assessment will ensure that there is positive or neutral impact on Canadian market if the employer hires foreign nationals. A labor market impact assessment on behalf of the employer and a temporary work permit for the foreign nationals are required before that foreign nationals can begin working for the Canadian employer through the temporary foreign worker program. If an employer is looking to hire a high wage worker, they must submit transition plans along with the labor market impact assessment that ensure that the employer is taking the steps as an employee to reduce their reliance on foreign workers over time. This ensures that qualified Canadians are given priority for available jobs. An employer offering a wage lower than the provincial and territorial median must pay for round-trip transportation for the temporary foreign worker. Ensure affordable housing is available. Pay for private health insurance until workers are eligible for provincial health coverage. Register for the temporary foreign worker with the provincial or territorial workplace safety board and provide an employer-employee contract. An Ontario child welfare organization is advising Canada to set up a central registry to track the unaccompanied Ukrainian minors arriving in Canada after fleeing the war. The Child Welfare Immigration Center of Excellence, abbreviated as CWIEC, was commissioned by the IRCC, Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, to study the rising issue of teens, Ukrainian teens, arriving alone under the Canada-Ukraine Authorization for Emergency Travel, abbreviated as the CUAET program. Under the CUAET, Ukrainians escaping Russia's full-scale invasion of their country are allowed to live, work, and study in Canada for up to three years. The federal government recently extended the application deadline to July 15th. As of May 6th of this year, according to the IRCC, more than 150,000 Ukrainians have arrived in Canada under the emergency travel program. Reported by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, some of those newcomers are teenagers who travel to Canada without parents or guardians. While some have arranged for accommodations before they arrive, some have not. And to make matters worse, the federal government is not tracking them once they arrive, leaving that responsibility to resettlement agencies and volunteer groups. Volunteers coordinating the arrival of Ukrainians estimate the potential number of unaccompanied minors to be in the hundreds, but no one can confirm for sure. But whatever the number is, is expected to keep increasing. A member from the Child Welfare Immigration Center of Excellence expressed that, they are all scattered. We get calls regularly about them, but we don't know where all of them are. According to a CWIEC report released in April titled Unaccompanied and Separated Children under CUAET, neither the Canadian border agents nor the IRCC officials are systematically identifying the unaccompanied minors at any point in their journey. Unfortunately, as no one has the current responsibility to track or report this data, it is impossible to identify the unaccompanied and separated children under the CUAET visa. That is all for this week's episode of My Consultant. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please click the bell icon to subscribe to the My Consultant YouTube channel and get notified for our latest posts. For more information on the topics covered, please visit myconsultant.ca 
where you can contact an authorized immigration and citizenship consultant. I'm Tashina Thompson. I am Tina Batra and we'll see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,